Hey, and it's Megan back to tell you once again about one of my favorite block parties, Open Streets Pittsburgh. The June Shindig is almost here, and for the first time ever, it's going through the Hill District. Bike Pittsburgh is shutting down three and a half miles of roadway from the hill through downtown, across the Roberto Clemente Bridge, and all the way into the north side. Leave your car at home for this one and come walk, bike, roll, even skip across the bridge if that is your thing. There's always so much to do and see at Open Streets Pittsburgh, plus the CityCast Pittsburgh team will be there with an open mic. It's all going down Saturday, June 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Make your plans at OpenStreetsPGH.org. Hey, CityCast friends, producer Sophia Lowe here. I am still checking off all the classic local summer activities. I'm going to Presque Isle for the first time. I've got tickets to a Pirates game where I will be scarfing down a renegade dog with the mini pierogies. I'm so excited. But we also want to hear from you. What's on your Pittsburgh summer bucket list? Tell us and you might hear your answer on the show. You can email us at pittsburgh at citycast.fm or you could text us or leave us a voicemail. Our phone number is 412-212-8893. That's 412-212-8893. We can't wait to hear from you. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh. If this is the summer you've decided to join in on the pickleball trend, there's a new indoor spot opening up in Homewood with a whole lot of courts. We've got some good news about our bridges and a delightful little update on the Heinz History Center's giant ketchup bottle. Plus, we need your help planning the perfect day at PNC Park. It's Tuesday, June 25th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with CityCast producer Sophia Lowe, and I am excited to catch you up (laughs) on the news, starting with an update on the Heinz History Center's big old ketchup bottle. Hey, Megan. I am so excited about this, too. (laughs) I have been rooting for the Heinz History Center so hard on this. Just a reminder, the History Center was in a little dispute with the zoning board over the giant ketchup bottle they put up on the side of the museum. Mm -hmm. And this is the ketchup bottle that used to live in Heinz Field. Yes, uh, our team loves it so much. We actually took a selfie in front of it last week. It's pretty spectacular. Um, So Heinz Field, now Akershire Stadium. Anyway, this whole debacle came about because the History Center was calling the ketchup bottle a historical artifact. Yes, it Uh, is. Agreed. (laughs) Same, honestly. Um, But they did not ask permission before they affixed it to their big old building there in the Strip District, which I guess they should have done. So this was an ask forgiveness, not permission situation because the zoning board has pretty strict rules about what can be considered a sign Uh and how big it can be in a given neighborhood. Um, And since, you know, the bottle has a whole Heinz ketchup label on it, it was sort of a matter of interpretation. So what's the verdict? Is the History Center in trouble or can the ketchup bottle stay up? The ketchup bottle is officially not a sign. Woohoo! I kind of think we all sort of knew, but it was still really <laughs> funny to watch. Um, the reasoning to me is kind of interesting. Um, we talked about this a few weeks ago, but basically it comes down to what the ketchup is allegedly advertising. Huh? <laughs> so the Heinz on the bottle, you know, the logo, it's part of the artifact itself. Um, so, you know, because this thing is like a perfect replica of the bottle that was made and sold by H.J. Heinz in 1876. Uh-huh. Uh, it's it, That is the artifact. It's not a direct advertisement for the History Center itself, despite the fact that they share a name. Oh, OK. So it's not like a sign for the museum. I see. Technically, yes. Uh, the CEO and president, Andy Masick, um, was very funny and very earnest in his defense fence of the bottle at the zoning board meeting in May. We played some clips from an old show back then. Yes, we did. That was fun. That was from our episode on May 21st. If you want to hear him for yourself, we'll link that in the show notes. 
Um, But I want to read you a statement from this latest meeting. Uh, This is from the official ruling. And once again, I just love how playful everyone's been about this. Um, And shout out to the zoning board, because this is probably the most attention they've gotten on a story in a good long while. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Uh, Quote, to be frank, the board does not relish considering legal bottlenecks where the applicant's anticipation of approval necessitates playing catch up. Any seasoned applicant should understand that post hoc applications for approval are a big dill and could be a recipe for landing in hot sauce. That's good. I think this is the first like zoning board quote that people are really excited about. Yeah, I'm trying to count here. There's eight, eight puns in this. Like they really they thought deeply about this. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) So now that we've got an end to our ketchup bottle saga, at least for now, uh, reminder, there are at least two of these things floating around and we love to invent new reasons to hang out with ketchup. Uh, Sophia, what new news do we have in store? I have more exciting news besides ketchup bottle wins. Um, Fewer bridges suck now. (laughs) I mean, I think that is also a matter of interpretation, but please proceed. Okay, fair enough. I would say it's a big improvement based on the numbers. So there's a study from a national transportation nonprofit. It's called TRIP. And they found Pittsburgh has just about cut its number in half for bridges rated in poor condition. Ah, yes. Uh, Poor condition. I feel like that's the phrase all Pittsburghers have had to learn since the Fern Hollow Bridge fell down, gosh, a year and a half ago. Yes. Um, So poor condition, if you are not familiar, doesn't mean that it's closed or that it's about to collapse. Uh, It usually is the nomenclature for like, do something about this ASAP. Mm -hmm. Uh, So deterioration on like supports or the bridge decking itself, it can mean a lot of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, But way back in 2014, we were... Way back when? (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay, 10 years ago, we were the worst in the nation for our bridges. 25% of our bridges here in Pennsylvania were rated as poor. But since then, that's dropped to about 13%. There's the good news. But there is a caveat. I'm going to say money because it is always about money. Yes, you're a winner. So there's been a (laughs) bunch of recent maintenance after, you know, the Fern Hollow collapse. Right. Uh, Falling down literally the day a sitting president comes to visit will do that for you. Oh, yeah. I just I can't get over it. Biden was here to talk about investing in infrastructure and a bridge falls down like the West Wing could not write something so perfect. They could not. But that meant we got a lot of federal money for the Fern Hollow project and as a part of COVID relief. But we need more money to keep, you know, fixing our bridges. Mm -hmm. So Tripp says if there isn't new funding and, you know, a lot of funding, we'll be facing the same problem. We'll have a bunch of bridges that are in poor condition by 2029. Gosh, we did a show. It feels like a long time ago where we talked about Pittsburgh, um, the city, you know, uh, their plans for maintaining its own bridges. Um, Because just a reminder for folks, we may be, you know, quote unquote, the city of bridges, but it is such (laughs) a patchwork of ownership. Yeah. The city owns some, the state owns some, like PennDOT. Um, the county owns a lot. So just because it is located here does not mean that it's technically that that institution's problem, at least financially. You know, mm-hmm. like it can be in Pittsburgh, but it might be owned by somebody else. Yeah, that's a really good point. I found a report from the city that said we allocated just over $1 million to bridge maintenance this year, like the city's money. Mm-hmm. And we've got 18 planned or ongoing bridge projects that should be wrapped up by 2027, relevant to my interests and where I walk. It looks like the Bloomfield Bridge is on that list. It's in the works for more maintenance in 2026. But like, there's absolutely no way a million dollars is enough. Like that is pennies compared to what these things cost to construct and repair. Oh, for sure. So just to compare the Sisters Bridges, that's the 6th, 7th and 9th Street Bridges between downtown and the north side. They just finished a massive renovation project. So Mm -hmm. that's how we got all those pretty lights that they've been customizing for Pirates games and Pride. It was so pretty. It was really pretty. (laughs) Um, And, you know, all of those renovations cost $85.6 million for all three bridges and, you know, took about seven years, give or take, because they couldn't close down all the bridges at the same time. Yeah. I mean, gosh, there have been so many in recent memory. Um, Fern Hollow, of course, famously cost a bunch. I'm sure some of it is because of the speed, but I think the final figure that I saw was somewhere in the neighborhood of 23, 23 and a half million. Mm -hmm. Um, The one that I remember just because we got made fun of so much was the Greenfield Bridge. That's the one if you're on the parkway headed towards the Squirrel Hill Tunnel, it goes over that big, huge ravine. There used to be a bridge under a bridge to catch all of the... I like that a lot. (laughs) It was terrible. (laughs) People made fun of us all over the country. 
country. It was like a joke uh, or the butt of a joke, I guess, um, on like, you know, late night programs. Um, but yeah, I think that one was 17 and a half million. Um, and then the Charles Anderson Bridge is one more recently over in Oakland. I think they're still working on it. But the estimate for that one is a ton. Fifty million dollars. Bridges are expensive. No. Um, and of course, they affect a ton of people. I think maybe we've acknowledged that they also need to be inspected more regularly. Um, those inspections should be heated, too, like after they're done. So, you know, an inspector, if they know that the bridge is already rated poorly and then they find something new or see that something's gotten way worse, they could close it to traffic or put like a weight restriction on it. Um, thanks to, Sophia, you sitting through that enormously long for yep. hollow mm-hmm. meeting. <laughs> We now know that that's what should have happened there and didn't. They were calculating it wrong and it should have been closed and wasn't. Yeah, not a good situation. And just to bring it back to this latest study from TRIP, they estimate 1.2 million vehicles go over just the poor bridges here in Pittsburgh every day. We will have a link in the show notes if you're curious about the other bridges that get the most traffic and are in poor condition. I will not be clicking on that link. I don't (laughs) think that's information I want to know, you know. Well, this probably won't make you any happier, but the average age of all bridges in Pennsylvania is 55 years old. In Pittsburgh, it's 53 years. Um, (laughs) It's a teeny bit younger. Yes, we are more youthful and exuberant. Um, But according to TRIP, most of these were only rated for 50 years. Excellent. So Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh, we are all on borrowed time. Yeah, maybe not actually youthful or exuberant. Um, (laughs) And the bad ones are actually a lot often older than that. TRIP says the average age of our bridges in poor condition is 82 years. But I will end on some good news. The lifespan for modern bridges has been growing. New materials, new best practices, all that good stuff. So the ones that have been recently, like Bill, in the last few years are rated for 75 years or more. A new retirement age. Huzzah. Yippee. Yens know we are always here for a best of the Berg weekend recommendation, and I am coming in hot with a big one. The Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy is teaming up with 11th Hour Brewing for a Parks on Tap tour. It's a summer beer garden series that kicks off June 30th at the Shenley Park Visitor Center. So from 1 to 7 p.m., you'll get live music, Black Cat Pizza's food truck, I can finally confirm it is so delicious, and of course, sip on a brewski. Plus, you're drinking for a cause because some of that beer money goes right back into our city parks. So mark your calendars for the Parks Conservancy's Parks on Tap Tour. That's Sunday, June 30th in Shenley Park, Saturday, July 20th in Allegheny Commons Park, and Sunday, August 18th in Highland Park. Plus, keep an eye out for more about September. Tickets to the Beer Garden are totally free, but registration is recommended. So get online. That's pittsburghparks.org slash beer hyphen garden and get your spots today. Hi, I'm David Plotz, CEO of CityCast. Or, as I can say now, thanks to a few weeks with Babbel. Hola, soy David Plotz, el jefe de CityCast. What if in 2024 you got a little bit better every day? When you're learning a new language with Babbel, that's exactly what you're doing. And if Babbel can help me start speaking a new language in just three weeks, imagine what you could do in a full year. I got started with Babbel because I realized that my girlfriend, who's a native Spanish speaker, and my son, who's in AP Spanish, were conspiring against me, or I thought they were conspiring against me in Spanish. I wanted to know what they were talking about. And now, thanks to literally just a few weeks of Babbel, I'm starting to be able to eavesdrop. It is rare that something so fun and simple, and Babbel is super fun and very simple, is also so useful. So here's a special limited time deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for CityCast listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash citycast. Rules and restrictions may apply. Mm 
Did you know there's a speakeasy on Liberty Avenue? Well, we're letting the cat out of the bag, or I guess I should say the rabbit out of the hat, because Liberty Magic is Pittsburgh's premier speakeasy theater dedicated to the art of elevating magic. And if you've never been, there is a really fun show right now that would be a perfect entry point to what they do best. Magician and comedian Rob Zabrecki has brought his variety show, The Zabrecki Hour to Pittsburgh, and it is just so wonderfully weird. There's deadpan comedy, song and dance, and his absurd take on mental phenomena, which may involve getting a few of his audience members involved. It is strange in a way you will never forget. The Zabrecki Hour is happening now at Liberty Magic through July 14th, and they even offer a skeleton key VIP experience for the best seats and an up-close encounter. You've got to check it out. That's the Zabrecki Hour at Liberty Magic through July 14th. Get your tickets at trustarts.org magic before they disappear. So let's move on to something a little more niche, I think, depending on your interests. Um, There are about to be a bunch of new pickleball courts here in Pittsburgh. I have never played, uh, but I know folks who do. Sophia, have you? Um, Yeah, I guess I got to the pickleball trend a little early because I played in my high school gym class. Like this was part of the requirement. I haven't since then. I don't really plan to. I personally don't get the hype, but maybe that's just like bad high school gym memories. I cannot believe that that is a school sport now. Like we were lucky if we played like (laughs) basketball or dodgeball. Um, I guess neither of us are from here in Pittsburgh. Uh, But I mean, did you have gym all through high school? Yep, I am pretty sure it was a New Jersey requirement, or at least for public schools. Wow. Uh, I, I, mine was not a real class. Uh, you only <laughs> had to have it for part of middle school and your freshman year of high school. I would have much preferred that. And it was kind of a joke. We didn't really have assignments. Very different experience, apparently. Um, anyway, I can say <laughs> from experience that I have at least witnessed the pickleball craze. Where my in-laws live, they have this big, beautiful park nearby, and the courts are always booked up. Like, sometimes there's a line. Wow. Okay. I could not imagine waiting in line to exercise. When I go to the gym, (laughs) I am in and out. Uh, Well, if anyone listening is struggling to find a spot here in the city, the old wheel mill space in Homewood is apparently being converted into something called the Pickleball Warehouse. Okay. I've, I've, I've seen a few stories lately, but I really like the Tribs, if only because they sent a real photographer. So it gives you like a kind of a sense of what the building looks like now. It's very different. What does it look like? So lots of graffiti murals. uh, Uh The ramps and stuff are all gone. Um, Looks like it might still, at least the day that photographer was there, um, need a little work. But uh, it was a good start, I guess. But it still felt familiar to what I saw when it was the wheel mill. Like it still looks like that space. Okay, I should actually look at the pictures. I've read about it. Um, It sounds like it'd be a pretty cool space. So the owners, Brian Wigington and Alexa Gervasi, I hope I'm saying your names right. Um, They say that they're doing a lot of renovation work themselves. And then the plan is 15 full-size courts and some half-size courts, some uh, for open play, some for reservations. Um, I think what's actually going to convince skeptics like me to go is all of the extras. So let me guess, they have coffee yes they do (laughs) a coffee bar lounge area and like down the line they want to put a kitchen and bar there and you know i can usually be convinced to go somewhere if you give me caffeine and a snack yeah yeah um i wonder if being indoors is gonna entice people at all um i guess i don't know enough about the sport to venture a guess but it seems like most of the pickleball courts i have seen in our area are outside Uh um like i was looking at the city of pittsburgh's pickleball page not a thing i realized they even had. Um, but Washington's Landing Park, they have 10 courts. Um, and the rest of the ones that I saw, they were like one to four courts. But again, all of them outside. Yeah, I couldn't imagine running around in the heat wave last week. Oh, yeah. Have you seen a timeline for when these new courts are going to open? I probably forgot since I wasn't planning on showing up opening weekend. (laughs) Yeah, uh, the website says any minute now. um, And the troop reports there's going to be a bigger grand opening later in the summer. Um, But for now, it looks like maybe the hours aren't totally set in stone. Um, Owners are looking for feedback, actually, on when people might want to play. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, website right now says monthly membership start at $67 and then $10 to just drop in and play. 
Cool. We will drop some links in the show notes. Um, that goes to the pickleball warehouses info, plus a cool list we found of pickleball courts in and around Pittsburgh. And before we go, one little fun thing. Megan, you are going to be so impressed with me. It is sports news, not pickleball. Okay, I'm I'm invested. What you got? Okay, the reveal, it's actually kind of half sports news, half food news. Um, but on Friday, the Pirates showed off some new cool jerseys with the Sheets logo on them. It's pretty subtle, just like the Red Sheets logo on the sleeve of the shirt. So are they like sponsoring the buckos or are they just like paying homage in some way because they do have those like snazzy city jerseys that actually feature a bunch of very sneaky local things i like it a lot um it has bridges and hypocycloids and a lot of that hypo what <laughs> you know the stars and the Steelers logo yes i do those have a name hypocycloids um there's your fun fact today oh that is a fun fact i'm gonna forget it by tomorrow big words <laughs> aren't gonna stick but to answer your question yes sheets is sponsoring the pirates um personally i just like that some people on twitter commented on the post um asking whether that means we'd ever get a sheets in pnc park do we need a sheets in pnc park like do you need a convenience store i guess in pnc park? i guess you don't need a convenience store in pnc park park, but I would like a Sheets in the City so I can, you know, hop on the bus and get milkshakes and mozzarella sticks. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't see it fitting, um, but I agree <laughs> with you. I think having one in the city would be useful. Um, I'm wondering if Sheets had to sell one of their food or drink items at the baseball stadium, uh, what you would pick? Ooh, milkshake. I just want a milkshake. I always want milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would pick one of their Sweets. Uh, I really hate their their <laughs> system of making everything a shush sound. But um, they have these blueberry and red velvet donut holes. They are usually sold by the cash register um, and little to-go cups. I love them. They are my all-time favorite road indulgence. I wonder if they would blend them in a milkshake for me. I wonder if that already exists. I could see them already coming up with that themselves. That does <laughs> sound like the kind of diabolical creation they might make. Yeah. I love diabolical food creations. Well, speaking of <laughs> Good Eats at PNC Park, we are putting together an episode about how to enjoy the perfect Pirates game. Yes, um, and we are planning to do a little on-the-ground reporting for the cause. Yes, I'm so excited. I am going to eat the renegade dog. I am going to get my mini pierogies. Um, I'm probably going to buy some swag. Okay, that's also good, I guess. I just want a free t-shirt. Uh, I mean, best of luck. <laughs> I Thank you. Thank you very much. But if you have any tips or favorite foods, please let us know. You can text us or leave us a voicemail at 412-212-8893, or you can email us. Our email is pittsburgh at citycast.fm. Yes, please. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking what you hear, please write us a nice review in Apple Podcasts. I know everyone says that, but it really does help folks find us. And it's also a really nice way to show us that you care. Um, If it's nice, we might even read it on the show. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. I'm not keeping that yippee. (laughs) (laughs) You might have to.